What we're going to be going over here are equity securities with the fair value option for holding an investment ownership of securities of another company. And for example here, Corporation A purchases the stock here of Corporation B and they're going to have equity ownership in the company here and they elect to report the securities here, those uh, the stock that they purchase here, Corporation B, using the fair value option. Now Corporation A acquired 25% of the 200,000 shares here of the common stock of Corporation B and what they had paid for those shares here is when they purchased them they cost them $28 per share and then what we're going to be looking at here when this uh, using this fair value option we have to be looking at the fair value or the market price of those shares of stock here for each of the uh, next reporting periods and we're really going to be looking at three periods here we're going to be looking at the end of uh, each of the next three years here and that's where we're going to be looking at how this fair value option works so we got the first year end of first year thirty dollars per share that's the market price here the common stock next year twenty four dollars per share and then our final year here the market price is thirty six dollars per share and also for our example here corporation B has paid some dividends each year and they also had net income here they have had a net loss too as well but we'll just look at it in terms of net income here okay so first the guidelines for the fair value option it, there it, it's elected on an investment by investment uh, basis here so on an individual basis whatever securities you uh, invest in you have to uh, can elect them here uh, uh, using this fair value option you do it on an individual basis rather than on a portfolio basis that might be done for the equity or the available for sale securities here and generally it's available only at the time the company first purchases the securities here and once chosen this fair value method here you must measure the security at its fair value until you no longer own it okay so let's go up here and let's look at our example here now again reporting these equity securities with the fair value option okay first off we want to note here since this investment here is greater than a 20 percent ownership the investment would normally be reported using the equity method unless the fair value option is elected here and that's what we're going to be looking the fact that we elect this fair value option now you could elect this fair value option here with really any percent of ownership if it was less than 20 percent you could still uh, elect it here whatever your ownership is you can elect the fair value option here okay so let's go down here and uh, again reporting this investment with the fair value option what you have to do here you have to set up your investment stock account here uh, on your balance sheet here and that's done on an individual basis here for each of these securities that you have elected here with the fair uh, using this uh, fair the fair value option here so what we have to do is we have to set up that investment stock account for and that's going to be based on the cost on the cost that we paid for those equity securities here or the investment here in Corporation B stock so you would have to label it here Corporation B stock here and we'd have an investment stock account up here and then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have another an investment account here and again it's going to be labeled specifically based on that Corp B stock that we invested here and that's invested in here and that's done on an individual basis here both for the cost here where we're going to record the cost plus what we're going to be recording here for this investment here uh, using this fair value option looking at the actually the change in fair value uh, for, for each reporting period and then along with our investment account here we're going to have uh, it tied into that is an unrealized holding gain or loss account here and that's going to be rec recognized as income here on our income statement so first let's look at our investment account here and the investment at cost so in this case we had 200 uh, Corp B has 200,000 shares of common stock Corp A purchases 25 percent of those shares here at $28 per share so that's our cost basis right here what we paid for that stock initially here and that's going to equate to one million four hundred thousand dollars so that's we would debit or increase our investment account here for one million four hundred thousand dollars and then over on our cash account of course we would credit or reduce our cash for what we paid here that one million four hundred thousand dollars so here what you have to do is just remember you your investment at your cost here whatever you paid for it uh, in this case times our percentage ownership if it was less than 25 percent you'd put uh, use that percentage or if it's more than 25 percent whatever the percentage ownership is you record it at its cost here the owner the percent of uh, ownership that you have 
in the in the equity security that you invested in the other company at its cost. Okay, so fine, we've recorded that here at its cost. And then um, just noting here, if there's any dividend uh, received, any dividend received, or the uh, Corp B issues cash dividends here, it would be recorded on the income statement here based on the percentage ownership here. So in this case, Corp A invested 25%. So whatever dividend was paid here by Corp B. Corp A would get 25% of that, and then they would record it as dividend revenue. And then again, note it just here for Corp B stock here. Credit whatever the dividend uh, percentage of the revenue, their uh, dividends they're getting here, increase or credit it here as dividend revenue on the income statement. And of course, we would go over here and increase our debit or increase our cash account for that dividend. One other thing we're going to look at here, when you're dealing with this fair value option here, there's also net income or net loss on on the case here of Corp B that was uh, what Corp B would have here at what they would have at the net end of the year here but uh, when you're using the fair value option that doesn't come into play here any uh, net income or net loss uh, would not be uh, does not get reported here by for Corp A's share of interest here in uh, Corp B here Okay, so next thing we have to deal with here is we're going to have this investment account that we're talking about here. And you set it up here on an individual basis. So that would be for Corp B stock. So this is this is the heart of the whole fair value method or fair value option here, not fair value method. The fair value option, what you're looking for is the change in fair value from e each period here. And you're going to record that in this investment account here. So and you would do that at the end of the period and we had those three years of reporting period here so what you have to do is you have to take your cost your cost basis that you have in that stock and um, that is what we paid for that stock originally here twenty eight dollars per share here and what you do is you compare it to the market value or the fair value of the stock here for each of the reporting periods so each of these reporting periods we had uh, remember that first period the market price here was $30 per share here the next year here it was $24 per share and then our last year year x3 here it was $36 per share so the key is here always take your cost whatever your cost is and compare it to the fair market value or the market value of the in this case it was a per share basis for a stock and then of course you take it times your percent or your ownership here in this case, we had 25% of 200,000 shares here, ownership, so that gives us 50,000 shares here. So what you would do here, just make your comparison, the market cost, the market price here, and compare it to the cost or subtract your cost from it times your number of shares here. So for, for our first period here, our investment account would have gone up here by $100,000 because our market price here was greater than our cost here by two dollars per share so it increased here by a hundred thousand dollars and then for the next year here you can see our market price here of twenty four dollars is less than our cost of twenty eight dollars so in this case we would have uh, a law our we would have lost or not lost but our uh, value of our fair market value that our investment had gone down here by two hundred thousand dollars so you credit or reduce your investment uh, uh, stock account here uh, by two hundred thousand dollars and then for our third year you can see what's going on here uh, market price here was uh, thirty six dollars was greater than our cost here at twenty eight dollars so in this case we would credit or debit or increase our investment account here okay so you can see here for each reporting period just compare your market price or your your market price the fair market value of your security that you're holding here on an individual basis at to its cost here in any uh, market price that's greater than the cost increases our investment account any market price here that is less than our cost decreases our investment account so okay so we've taken care of that here in this investment account you just keep tra keep track of that investment and uh, on each reporting period here and really once you selected this fair value option you have to continue using it regardless here until you get rid of or you sell that security you have to keep using that and you're always going back to your cost whatever your cost basis is here when you originally purchased that uh, security you compare it to the market value here and then the difference that gets recorded in your investment account either as an increase or a decrease in your investment account and then the other thing that's tied into this investment account is this 
unrealized holding gain or loss on the income statement. Again, that's reported on our income statement. So in this case, for our first year here, we had that increase in our investment by 100,000. So our unrealized holding gain or loss would have been credited here or increased by 100,000. And then for the next year where we had a reduction in our investment account here, 200,000, we would have uh, had an unrealized holding loss in this case for a $200,000. So you can see what's moving on here, moving around here. You have to look at your uh, recognize any unrealized holding gain or losses here based on your changes in the investment account. And then for that last year here, we had a debit or increased our investment account increased by 400,000. So we would credit our unrealized holding, uh, in this case, gain here for $400,000. So what's happening here with this unrealized holding gain or loss? It's going to the income statement income. It's being recognized as income. So if we just go down here, and look at it in these simple terms here. So we have our net income before our securities gain or loss here. We'd have some net income here. Then our investment, our unrealized uh, gain or loss for our investment. That's that unrealized holding gain or loss here. You would be either adding or subtracting that here from that income here before before accounting for our securities here, uh, unrealized gains or loss. And then you can see here our total net income would be comprised of the income here before our securities gain or loss and then for the unrealized gain or loss here uh, for that for our security that we're holding, that would be in our included in our net income. So just so you can see what's going on here. Again here, uh, you do not report the share of net income or loss here uh, by Corporation B when you're using this fair value option. All you're doing is you, uh, recording your cha fair value changes in your investment account here. And then again, dividends received, that would be what we ca considered up here, that dividend revenue account. So any dividends received from the um, investment here in the invest equity account here go directly into a dividend revenue here on our income statement. So it's really different here from the equity method where, and we won't get into that here, but what we want to understand here is this uh, fair value option. And we had <coughs> choices here either using that in this case, we had to normally use the equity method, but uh, in the, you can select the fair value option here, and you could have done that with available for sale securities too, where you would be using the regular fair value method. But nonetheless here, with this fair value option, this is where on an individual basis here, you set up your investment account and look for, in, and you have to record any changes in fair value here from period to period or reporting period to period here based on and the, in, percentage ownership that you have and owned here and then any of any of those investment changes here get any increases or decreases in your investment account based on that fair you change in fair value get recognized as an unrealized holding gain or loss and they go to, into the income statement so they would be included in the income statement and then the other thing to note here always you set up that investment account your investment stock account again on an individual basis in this case we had it for corp b stock individual basis and you record it here at your cost and it just sits here at that cost until it would get rid of the securities or sell off the securities okay so i guess that'll cover our topic here with this fair value option and when we're talking about fair value option it's it's different than the fair value method here in the fact that you're setting up this investment account here and you're not adjusting the invest it's not a valuation account here to your investment stock cost account it's just a separate account here and you're keeping track of that fair value change in your investment. And again, once you select the fair value option here, then you have to stick with this and continue on recording any changes in your investment here in your, that individual basis for each of those stocks. And then any changes in the investment here from period to period get reported here as unrealized holding gain or loss going into the income statement. So here everything's going into the income statement and being reported in the income statement. Okay, so that'll end our subject here on this fair value option.